YouTube. YouTube. What's, What's up, up guys? guys? Welcome back to Father Son Time. We are here today to talk about Star Wars Visions. We're back here in our grandma and grandpa's basement to record this because our heater is broken in the, at our house and it's very cold. Yeah, too bad we don't have a tauntaun and a uh, lightsaber. Uh, oh! Dang! <laughs> you might recognize this because we recorded our very first episode, which actually ended up being in four parts. Our very first episode of Father Son Time here, where we talked about the original trilogy. So we thought it'd be cool to talk about Star Wars again while we're oh here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so gross. <laughs> you think they smell bad on the outside. Today we're going to be ranking all the episodes of Star Wars Visions. Star Wars Visions is an anime anthology series of nine short films by seven Japanese animation studios. The creators of each studio were given freedom to tell their own versions or visions of a Star Wars story. The series has received universal critical acclaim. What did you think about Star Wars Visions as a whole? I liked most of it. Yeah, I actually think that it was some of the best Star Wars content that has come out in a long time. Maybe some of the best Star Wars stuff that... Disney has produced that in The Mandalorian's right up there, too. Um, which Logan hasn't seen yet. But um, I'm going to see it soon. Some of the episodes are better than the other ones. There's one or two that we really don't like, but that's yeah, okay. two. <laughs> I think it's really interesting that we got so many different kinds of Star Wars stories that the creators of these studios could tell whatever they wanted. And he gave us a really diverse perspective onto the Star Wars universe, which yeah, was really refreshing. Like they gave them freedom to do any Star Wars thing. The stories are non-canonical. That they, means that they, they can't, like, they one episode doesn't lead to the next episode. Kind of. Canonical means that it's part of the big story that tells the one big story. These ones were just stories that could exist on their own that aren't part of, like, the Skywalker saga. So yeah, so they could pretty much tell whatever story they wanted to, but they all still felt very Star Warsy. One last thing before we get to the rankings. I want to talk about all the Star Wars cliches that we have in this series. What was something that was in every single episode that is classic Star Wars? Lightsaber. There is a lightsaber. <laughs> every single episode, that is probably the most Star Warsy thing you could have. But we had some other ones. How many times do you think they said, I've got a bad feeling about this? One? We had it in five. Over half of the episodes. I got a bad feeling about this. So you have a bad feeling about this. Die! If you can also feel it, I'm sure you understand. I have a bad feeling about this. You've got a bad feeling about this? I'm really hoping that isn't true. But I've got a bad feeling about this. Huh? That and having a droid sidekick were the two other most classic Star Wars things that we have. We also had three May the Forces Be With You. Three times we ended up on Tatooine. The bad guy said bring order and peace to the galaxy twice. Twice we lost limbs. So it's actually not that many. Usually we have a lot more lost limbs in Star Wars. We had one do or do not, there is no try reference. We had one Wilhelm scream, what? which is that scream that's always like... The, the, ah! uh, yeah, the Wilhelm ah! scream. And we had one, Logan, you don't know this one yet. We had one Dank Ferric. Dank Ferric, look what you've done! Which is a curse word in Star Wars. What is it? Wait, someone said Dank Ferric? Dank Ferric. In Lop and Ocho, the dad says Dank Ferric, and it's kind of like, darn it! Or maybe a little Cause stronger. What? So, you ready to do our ranking now? This is how we're going to do the rank. So, he is going to tell us what his ranking is, and then I'm going to tell it us what my ranking is and we'll and take turns then we're going to talk about my ideas and while i'm doing that he will say some of his ideas yeah we'll only talk about each episode one time based on logan's rankings all right so let me start my number nine is tatooine rhapsody logan what's your number nine tatooine rhapsody yeah i don't think that's much of a surprise was there anything you liked about tatooine rhapsody no <laughs> Not at all. Here's one cool one. Tamora Morrison, who voices Jango Fett and all the clones, and then revoiced Boba Fett later on. He came back to voice Boba Fett. So that one's kind of cool. But, yeah, I don't really like the music in it. The story was a little silly. He, he, he was just like doing that the entire time. Yeah, he, he was jumping and dancing a bunch. 
I feel like Tatooine Rhapsody was really just an opportunity to do a bunch of fan service. You know, fan services? Fan service is when they put in references to previous movies or episodes just to please the fans. Not really to tell the story. Yeah! This one took place on Tatooine. We saw Jabba the Hutt, Bib Fortuna, Boba Fett. We went to the cantina and we saw all the cantina people. Yeah, it was just a whole bunch of fan service and I guess it was kind of cool to see him, but What's didn't really do anything. Number eight. Logan is ready to jump on. All right, number eight, I have Akakiri. I have Akakiri. I don't have much to say about Akakiri. Yeah. I. It was a strange one to end with. The ending is really weird. Now, I did like that we actually saw a dark side user bring someone back from the dead and heal them. Palpatine promised Anakin that he could do that to Padme, and it didn't happen. Usually we don't see the dark side as being able to heal. That seems like a life set thing. Yeah, but then it just kind of ended. It was a strange one to end the series with because I watched it and I was like, eh. It just kind of ended. It was n probably my least favorite animation style. I, I That one just didn't resonate with me very well. Yeah, the animation I'm like, no. My number seven is the twins. My number seven is T.O.B. one. Ah, okay. So let's talk about T.O.B. one. I don't really like that mostly it's all joy. <laughs> well, it's kind of, it, they're paying homage to Astro Boy, which is not an anime or a manga that I've seen or read. He is stylized after a very famous Japanese anime character. But I do like that his father says, you better, you better find your crystal. You better find your crystal. be a Jedi, you better find your crystal. Yeah, he, he kind of scolded him at the beginning for wanting to be a Jedi, but then he supported him when he had that force vision and, and the professor came back as a force ghost and, and then he found the kyber crystal within him and used the lightsaber. That was kind of cool. I thought you would have liked this one more because I thought that the T.O.B. one, who also is called Toby, when he becomes a Jedi, Toby. he... Our dog is named Toby, so we like that. He reminded me of Aang from Avatar. His kind of personality, the way he was kind of goofing off and dancing around. And so I thought you would have liked that more. T.O.B. one also had a lot of fan service and Easter eggs in it, like the... Easter eggs? Easter eggs is a term. It's a hidden little secret. It's a hidden surprise for fans to spot. For instance, we um, the ship in the basement that T.O.B. one leaves in is a T-16 fighter, which Luke Skywalker references in A New Hope. That's impossible, even for a computer. It's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. He's clearly on Tatooine. I think that the, the, the planet is Tatooine. The huts are designed like Aunt Beru, Beru's house. There's twin suns. It's a desert planet. They're trying to they're trying to terraform it, but it's it's clearly referencing Tatooine. Yeah. It was cutesy. Um, I thought it'd be higher on your list, but yeah. What is your sixth one? So my number six is T.O.B. one. Oh. And what is your number six? Twins. Twins. I had that one at seven. I wanted to like this one more. Me too. But there were a few things that kind of took me out of it. What so, did you like about it? I like the droid that said, I'm bad feeling about this. <laughs> the, the droid said, dur, 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 dur. Little R-Duo, yeah. What's up, r Dudo? Dudo? No. Duo. Oh, R2. Doo -doo. It's not r Dudo. -doo. No, no. <laughs> they would not throw a poop joke into that. Um, <laughs> this one has a ton. a ton! Maybe the most Star Wars references in all of it. I have a list of the Star Wars tropes that are in this one. The Empire sure loves bridges without hand railing. They have it all over the first Death Star when Obi-Wan's climbing around looking for the shield generator. He could have fallen and died so many times. I guess he's a Jedi, so he didn't. Both of the twins were wearing Vader suits. The bad guys, they're going to bring order and peace to the galaxy. Twins, that's a Star Wars trope. They were conceived by the Force, like Anakin. We have a planet-destroying weapon. We have a wise-talking astromech in our duo. Katari literally says, a galaxy far, far away. He's going to take the kyber crystal to a galaxy far, far away. I don't know how he's going to do that. I don't know if you can leave the galaxy. He says, punch it, like Han does. So you've got a bad feeling about this. There is no try, only do. Katari crashes on the Tatooine at the end and watches the twin sunrise. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of references Damn. in this one. I think those ones take me out of it. I like it when they do something a little bit more different, I, or at least the references are more subtle. I didn't like his long lightsaber. That was pretty silly. And the fact that they could breathe in space, and they could exist in space, there was... And the droid hat where that sounds. <laughs> but the one guy who... who could wait, who, could, who could breathe. The one guy who doesn't need to breathe at all, the droid, 
He wore a space helmet. Oh, Master M. Which made it seem that much more ridiculous <laughs> that the the twins didn't wear space helmets. Aye, aye, aye. And his lightsaber got huge. He was in space with no helmet. And then they jumped the hyperspace, and he was just sitting on top of his X-Wing. It was just a little too silly. It was just a little too ridiculous. But I did like, this is where they, they started getting a little creative with some of the lightsabers. What was cool about Kare's lightsaber? It was red, and then it turned to blue because he was born on the dark side, but he wants to be in the light side. It was cool that it reflected his transformation. She had crazy lightsabers. She had the lightsaber whips and like six or eight lightsabers, so... She actually could beat Grievous. She has more lightsabers than General Grievous. We're on our number five now. My number five is The Elder. My number five is The Village Bride. Okay, let's talk about Village Bride. I liked The Village Bride because at the very end she like showed she was a Jedi. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that at the beginning there wasn't like a lot of like action or anything. I think that's why I liked it. I have, um, I'm not gonna say where. It? I have Village Bride a lot higher than you, obviously. You liked it. Buddy. I do like that we got to see kind of a new perspective on the Force. They call it Majina on that planet. They're connected to the Force through nature and the planet and through memory. So I thought that was interesting. I like that. I thought the artwork was really beautiful in this one. The Padawan at the beginning, her name is F. I like that she's kind of mysterious and... <laughs> that she's kind of mysterious and uh, is lost. Her, her master was from that planet that they were on, and he died in the Clone Wars, and then she was left on her own. When she takes off her mask, and she slices off her Padawan braid... She's knighting herself. She knights herself, yeah. She's inspired by the selflessness of the bride, who is going to turn herself over to the bad guys, and she decides to become a Jedi Knight and start fighting for what is right. Um... <laughs> she decides to save other people like this. She's like, <laughs> and puts the box in the room, mm -hmm. and gets out her lights. Yeah, she has, a, she has a cool one, and it's kind of like a lightsaber katana, like a light katana. Because it's so thin, too. Mm -hmm. It's designed like a traditional Japanese sort of katana. I find the character of F is probably my second favorite character in the whole series, behind someone we'll talk about later on. I like that she is kind of lost and ambiguous, and the yellow lightsaber makes her a somewhat more ambiguous Jedi. Um, so yeah, I think that I think that she's really cool. I thought it was kind of funny how the um, the battle droids were kind of silly and goofy, like kind of like they are in the Clone Wars TV yeah, show. Yeah, like like in Clone Wars, she's she like say what, and then she's like get away from me. Bye. Yeah. When she goes to do her her big move against the bad guy. Her shoes kind of turn like they go like shoo, like she has rocket shoes. Then she shoots blasts forward using a, a like, force run. It's like, ah! <laughs> um, my number four is Lop and Ocho. Lop and Ocho. Okay, so we, we've synced back up. Lop and Ocho. This one I think is maybe the most beautiful one. I love the artwork in this one. I think I it's know, really I beautifully. Love it. it's like two more girls, and I'm, and then the like two. The set piece at the end when they have the big battle when they're on the hangar, the cherry blossom petals that are falling and they're fighting with that, I think is a really cool and unique shot in Star Wars. Two things I like when Ocho like when she bites her thumb and puts the blood right here and turns to the dark side. And it's so, like, cra crazy because Lop cuts her back and she's alive! <laughs> that was she a little... She back and, and gets them! It's like... That was a little confusing because she wanted to save her sister, so then she takes a lightsaber and another weapon and slices a big X on her. And she falls, but then she comes back, so I don't know how she was going to save her by slicing her, but she survived anyways. But see, now, unlike Akakiri where it just kind of ended, this one ended and I felt like we saw a self-contained little story, but there's it's part of a bigger story. And I yeah. want to see that bigger story. I want to see what happens next, what Lop is going to do to help try and bring Ocho back to the good side. One thing I liked about this one was how much it focused on family. I thought it was a nice story about family, and Star Wars often is a story about family. And we saw, again, this is a new perspective on lightsabers, we saw a different way for a Jedi to get a lightsaber. Lop is 
given the lightsaber. By our dad, it's a mm. traditional lightsaber. Yeah. And he, he says, I'll give you this if you pass it on to someone. And it was really confirming that Lop, who is an alien from another planet, who was adopted into the family, is really a member of that family. He said, you are my daughter. This is their traditional lightsaber. It's a little bit different because Jedi are not supposed to marry and have kids, so they don't really have ancestors to pass things down to. But I like this new... That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, I like that they had this uh, different way of, of giving out a lightsaber. I like Lop and Ocho. I would like to see them return. I'd like to see what happens next in this story. If there's a season two or something like that, it'd be cool to see what happens. All right, number three. What's your number three, Logan? The other. My number three is Village Bride. That's how much I like Village Bride. Okay, let's talk about The Elder. I love The Elder because I like that, like, they sense there's something and and then the Padawan goes and it just looks like an old man and then he pulls out his two blades and he's like, he does the same thing and she's like, and he's like, ah! He's quite a good fighter and he's really quick and he uses those short he's little... An old man too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, we've seen we've seen older characters like Yoda or Dooku. Or when Darth Maul pretending to be an old man. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 my butt, my butt. His butt, yes. It was the key. Darth Maul, my butt. <laughs> this one grew on me. I didn't like it at first. My issue was. I really didn't like the dialogue. I like to change my list because, like, technically, the other was actually on my sixth one. So... You jumped to three. Wow, I jumped quite a bit. Yeah, it's weird when they when he says, "I never thought about it that way." Yeah, the dialogue's a little stilted for me. I don't know. There, there was something about the dialogue that I didn't like. I do like the relationship with the Padawan and the Master. I thought that was good. The fight with the Elder is great. Oh, this was another case where, how did the Padawan not die? He got sliced by him and he was lying there, but he was able to, to throw it. But I did like the, the killing blow where he sticks the, his, the lightsaber there and, and it shoots right through the Elder. And then he crumbles and falls and he turns into dust or, or crumbles into ash. I, I would be interesting to know, interested to know more about the Elder and what he's been doing. I think it's a good one. Yeah, it really grew on me because like it was at number six or seven and it went down to three. Okay, What's now we're in to the top two. My number two is the ninth Jedi. Mine is the duel. I like the anime and mm. I like how... He like pretends he's a jet, like he he's a Sith killer mm -hmm. or something like that, and he has a red lightsaber. He's like a, he's a Sith like hunter or an assassin, yeah. But he he used to be a Sith. Yeah, he used to be a Sith, so he still has his red light um like lightsaber. Mm -hmm. So, but he's actually a good guy. Yeah, the duel was is hands down my favorite, easily my favorite. It was an incredible way to start the series. Maybe it started off on too high of a note, but I, it made me want to watch all of them. Even though Tatooine Rhapsody followed it, and I was like, oh, wow, this one's not very good. But I love the duel. I love the, the black and white style. It's an homage to Akira Kurosawa, who um, is a Japanese filmmaker who heavily influenced just Star Wars in general, but his stories are in black and white. But then I thought it was cool how there were the flashes of color with the lightsabers and with the blasters. Yeah, I thought this one was awesome. We see a cool lightsaber in this one. It's a umbrella. Yeah, she has that one that comes out and it's... I can marry Poppins, but it can kill you. <laughs> yeah. Just a spoonful of sugar. That lightsaber is pretty ridiculous, but you know what? It was used so well that I thought it worked. The reveal that he has a red lightsaber, that he is, that I'm not a Jedi. And he pulls out the red lightsaber. <laughs> that was so awesome. I'm not a Jedi. Their fight is really good. And see, now this is good, I think, fan service. When they're fighting on the log in the river, that's kind of a reference to Obi-Wan and Anakin when they're fighting on Mustafar in the lava. And there was a little bit when they were fighting of Duel of the Fates music. You actually noticed this before I did. I noticed that and you were, and you didn't. It was like. 
under them that was um I'm impressed with your ear with that. I also like how he how did how did he defeat her? He hid and he put one of his lightsabers on the statue so she thought it was him and then she cut it and then he came out and cut her. You know what he actually stabbed her with with his other lightsaber? It was the scabbard where his lightsabers went into. So this was another different one. So instead of having a blade that seems to retract, it seems to pull out of a scabbard. So but when he took it out, it had another blade that extended out of it. So he used that to stab her. Ronan, who's the main character in this one, he's my favorite character. And he's a lot like F. I feel like he's a dark side counterpart to F. That they're both lost a little bit. And he found his way into killing Sith and collecting their kyber crystals. And she found her way by becoming good, and she's going to kill bad guys okay, as well. Okay, what do you not like about this? About the duel? The one thing I, I wondered is, I thought his lightsaber would be white. Who else has a white lightsaber? Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka Tano has white lightsabers, and she stole them from a Sith Inquisitor and purified them, and they turned white. I feel like he would, because he's no longer... Maybe he still utilizes the dark side. I don't know. Maybe he still has that dark side <laughs> tendency. But... I would have thought they'd be white, but I think practically you wouldn't be able to see the lightsaber blade well. They needed it to be red to stand out against the black and white texture. I could keep talking about the duel. Logan clearly wants to jump to his number one. So, Logan, what is your number one? Let's talk about it. Ninth Jedi! Ninth Jedi! My number one is the duel. Let's talk about the Ninth Jedi. Okay, I'm going to say all the things. <laughs> First, I like how there's seven people who are Force users. They think they're Jedi right now, and I'll get back to that later. Meanwhile, Kara, her dad, is is making nine lightsabers. Are there any other lightsabers in the galaxy anymore? No. Yeah, all the lightsabers are gone. Yeah, they got lost in the galaxy. Her job is to deliver them to all the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Seven of them to those Force users. One for her, and... The Margrave. He's the one that's he's hiding in the droid and he's testing them to see if yeah, the other people the are there. Margrave. What does the dad do when he's making the lightsabers? You you can use the force to show what color and her lightsaber is clear. And that brings me to when the seven force users and when she goes six of those Jedi turn out to be Sith. Did that surprise you? Yeah. Yeah, that was oh, a good and, twist. And, and one of the Jedi were good, so they had to fight. And then a robot was helping all, all seven Force users. And he was a good guy. It was the Margrave, yeah. He grabbed the lightsaber. But, what, color, what color did it turn when he grabbed it? Green. Turned green. But when all the other people like fought, destroyed five of them, mm -hmm. one of them was actually spying on them, but got turned to the dark side while he was spying on him, and then he turned back to good. What color was his lightsaber when he turned good? Purple. Purple lightsaber means it's very powerful, so they can go a little to the dark side. They use a little bit of their emotion and a little bit of their power to mm. kind of touch the dark side slightly. <sighs> But his lightsaber was red because he got a little corrupted by the influence of the, the six Sith that he was around. The Margrave, did he look like he was a good guy when you saw him with his mask on and everything in his message? No, they kind of they kind of he tried to trick eyes. you a bunch. He yeah. Had, he had like red eyes, he was like. He was spinning in the little little hologram, yeah. But then he popped down like da -da -da -da. Kara, she doesn't have a strong, the strongest connection to the Force yet. She's good with the lightsaber, but then when she's fighting, she picks her side. Her lightsaber goes from clear to green. What were the Sith trying to do? They were trying to destroy the Margrave. They were Jedi hunters, so they were trying to hunt and kill all the Jedi, but they discovered that someone had lightsabers. And, and, and they the were... Margrave was trying, he knew some of them were Sith, and he was mm -hmm. trying to know which ones. That's why they were doing the lightsabers, mm -hmm. so that, because the Force ones, so they can see who are Sith and who yep. are not. I like that. I think that's pretty cool that the Kyber Crystal can change. That should have been your first one, my God. Uh, no, I still like the duel more. And it ends because uh, Kara's father had been captured by the Jedi Hunters. And so the Margrave promises that they'll go out and try and rescue him. So this is another good example of, we see a distinct little story that happens, but it's part of a bigger story. So this would be another one I'd like to see more of. Yeah, um, I, I want to see 
like how many hours? A thousand. A no, thousand infinity. hours. Infinity hours. Never, never stop. Never stop Ninth Jedi. I think that was a good one. Not quite my favorite. I actually, you might think, you might think this is crazy, Logie. I was this close to putting Village Bride two, and putting Ninth Jedi as three. I was this close <gasps> to doing it. Dang, I actually, no! you can actually see here. I almost ranked this one above the next choice because I like F so much as a character. I have the the written proof. I like the character of F, and I like the character of Ronan, and that almost makes them better for me. Definitely made Duel better. I think Ronan is awesome. Ah! We hope you enjoyed watching Visions, and we hope you enjoyed watching our video of our ranking. I have the Duel as my top one. Logan has Ninth Jedi as his favorite. If you like our videos, please subscribe and like them, because we really enjoy doing them for you. We do really like making these videos, and we hope you like watching them. We appreciate it when... you're the best dad, and I'm the best son. <laughs> Straight from the son's mouth. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. See, See you, you next, next time. time.